HMS Weekly English Program. This is a weekly international Harari Media Services English program that focuses on different aspects and issues related to Harar and the Harari people, be it social, political, economic, or historical facts. In a nutshell, it deals with everything Harar in conjunction with affairs in Ethiopia. It is intended to reach Harari and non-Harari viewers and audiences alike around the globe. It is informative, educative, and above all, it is meant to present facts and build capacity at all levels. As witnessed by various governments and international organizations, undeniably, Harar is a city-state of peace within the Ethiopian galaxy and the African universe. This weekly English program was created to promote peace and humanity to its viewers allowing them to have people-to-people -people relationships of peaceful coexistence in Harar and Ethiopia at large. As such, today we have the following episodes for you. Genesis of Harari Regional State, Dispelling Political Fallacies Written by Professor Abdi Khalil and narrated by Iman Jami about two weeks ago, I had an interesting encounter with other fellow Ethiopians who happened to travel the same route with me across Africa. As usual, we as Ethiopians tend to be drawn to others who come from our homeland. So, we had a discussion on the dramatical political discourse in Ethiopia. After a bit of emotional social group politicking, we all came to the same common understanding and started to talk about Ethiopia in general, considering humanity minority rights, responsibilities, obligations we have to one another, and why Ethiopia is in its current state of affairs. And whether we look forward or backwards, we all agreed that it is highly charged with ethnic politics now more than ever. One of the hot issues raised was the issue of Harar, whether or not it deserved to have a regional state status because of its small population size. This issue has touched me immensely, as they have very little knowledge on how the Harare Regional State was established and its contributions to Ethiopia. They were full of the usual distorted political information or propaganda. And this really had me thinking that if these highly educated individuals from ethnicity X, Y, and Z have shallow awareness and understanding about the establishment of the Harare Regional State, then how on earth will the majority of us with little access to information, education, and historical facts, could think of the higher regional states. This is what triggered me to write this article, and I hope that it is an eye-opener for both Hararis and non-Hararis alike, as well as busting the misconceptions surrounding the Harari regional state. It is an undeniable fact that the four enumerated large ethnic groups in Ethiopia are the Oromo, Ahmara, Somali, and the Tigray. Similarly, in the Harari regional state, the majorities are the Oromo, followed by the Ahmara and the Hararis. Taking into consideration the concentration of political struggles in 1992 and the actions of several liberation fronts to have autonomous administrative entities, Harar, as a minority social group, did not have the say and could not isolate itself from the actions of the majority large liberation fronts. The establishment of the Harari regional state was not solely based on numbers, as if only numbers are a determining factor in establishing a state. It was based on a regional administration or any administrative entity or parliamentary representation, be it in Ethiopia or elsewhere in the world. Beyond Ethiopia, there are many countries around the globe that have supported and established minority self-governing territories, parliamentary seats, or administrative entities within their borders. To name a few countries, for example, Norway, Sweden, Italy, Slovenia, Poland, New Zealand, Pakistan, Colombia, South Africa, Fiji, Singapore, Canada, Spain, Nigeria, and many other countries have taken affirmative actions to uphold minority rights in support of the minorities running their own affairs within their own borders.
around the globe and Hararis as original people of the land, why are some misleading notions originating in denying the existence of the Harari regional state in Ethiopia? Historical facts, indigenous peoples' rights to socio-economic contribution and affirmative actions, as well as reviving the dwindling social groups due to a systematic ethnic cleansing and centuries of repression were prominent factors in establishing the Harare regional state in the 1990s. Some details and concrete facts are presented in retaining Harar as an autonomous state, part and parcel within Ethiopia. I am also hoping that the information presented here will dispel any unfounded ethnic politicking about the Harare regional state. Moreover, the existence of the Harare regional state does not threaten the existence of the 80-plus social groups. It rather completes the missing historical jigsaw puzzle in Ethiopian history. Without the history of Harar, Ethiopian history would be significantly diminished and incomplete. Apparently, it is high time to have remedies and treat political infections that have created tension among the various social groups in Ethiopia today. At this junction, let me provide some treatments for some political infections so that the political immunized individuals or social groups can rearrange themselves to Hararis, Harar, and to all the minorities in Ethiopia. Here are four major facts about the genesis of Harari regional state in Ethiopia. In a two-part series, IHMS presents today part one, which spells out first historical facts about Harar and Hararis, as well as the rights of Hararis as indigenous people in Ethiopia. Part 1. Historical Facts Referring to many national and international historians and documented facts, Harar is an ancient metropolis of once a mighty race, the only permanent settlement in East Africa, the reported seat of many Muslims' learning, a walled city of religious sites, millennia-old houses, possessing its independent chief, its peculiar population, its known language and its own conage, the emperor of the coffee trade and the great manufacturer of cotton cloths. The list is endless. Before the rise of Addis Ababa and Nairobi, Harar was the only city worth of its title in East Africa between the city of Aksum and the city of Zanzibar Island on the eastern African coast of Tanzania. It is impossible to write the history of Harar and the Harari people in a few paragraphs, but in a nutshell, its people exhibit distinct cultural and traditional values. The city itself composes many world heritages and protected sites. Some even call Harar a living museum. It was the hub for education, agriculture, and trade in its own currency. Its dynasty enumerated 76 known emirs or kings, starting from Amir Habuba in 969 through the year 1000, ending with Amir Abdullahi from 1885 to 1887. Sadly, because of geopolitical pressures and the invading of local and European forces, it has now been reduced from a country that used to stretch from Zila off the Somalian coast and north to Eritrea to its current tiny physical surface area of only 356 square kilometers. However, UNESCO's recognition of Harar as the laureate city of peace, solidarity, and unity easily confirms all the historical facts about the origin of Hararis and their homeland. Wouldn't these facts suffice to protect and preserve Harar from the unjustified and illegal localized attacks? Well, Hararis have never given up and will never give up on their natural rights to govern themselves. They have withstood the brutal dictatorships of Milanik, Haile Selassie, and Mangistu regimes. In 1948, the Harari people organized a peaceful movement for self-determination. Unfortunately, this movement was crushed by the tyrant regime 
of brutal killings of many Hararis. The leaders of the Qulub movement were exiled and many were sent to Debra Marcos, Jimma, and the Gore notorious prisons. Generally, Hararis were displaced within Ethiopia and immigrated to foreign lands ever since then. However, as most Ethiopian ethnic groups or nations and nationalities liberated themselves from the brutal military regime in the 1990s, the Harare regional state, like any other regional state, came to existence within the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia as well. Indigenous People Both archaeological evidences and international conventions point out that the Hararis are indigenous people indeed. The Journal of Islamic Archaeology, Futuh al-Habasha, the University of Exeter, BBC Documentary, and many other studies concluded that ethnogenesis of the Harari population links to the Harla people in vast Haragay region. Hararis are the last natural representation of the Harla people as indigenous people in the vast Harari Emirates at the time. According to UN sources, the Covenant of the League of Nations, indigenous people are referred to as non-self-governing or colonized peoples. In the 1950s, the ILO began referring to the problems of the indigenous population in independent countries, which is to say, culturally and geographically distinct communities that were non-self-governing, marginalized, and colonized inside the borders of their independent states. The term indigenous people, or indigenous ethnic minorities, or tribal groups, are used to describe social groups that share similar characteristics, namely a social and cultural identity that is distinct from dominant groups in society. The United Nations Human Rights Body, the ILO, the World Bank, and the international law apply four criteria to distinguish indigenous people. They are as follows. Number one, indigenous peoples usually live within or maintain attachments to a geographically distinct ancestral territory. Two, they tend to maintain distinct social, economic, and political institutions within their territories. Three, they typically aspire to remain distinct culturally, geographically, institutionally, rather than assimilate fully into a national society. And four, they self-identify as indigenous or tribal. Self-identification as indigenous or tribal is usually regarded as a fundamental criteria for determining whether groups are indigenous or tribal, sometimes in combination with other variable languages, such as spoken and the geographical locations or concentration. By any definition and convention, Hararis are indigenous people in Ethiopia. Also, Strong archaeological discoveries and evidence about the Harla people confirm the link to indigenousness in Harari people. The UN indigenous people criteria alone is more than enough to protect, uphold, and retain the Harari regional state. The majority's code of conduct towards indigenous people is a litmus test whether they are in control of their power, democratic principles, or upholding the rules of law as well as how different they are from dictatorships and genocide monsters. On October 14, 2019, the people of North America celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day. This also resonates with all Indigenous people around the globe, as it is a celebration of people in their homeland. Indigenous Peoples Day is a day to remember the struggles and tragedies they endured. It is a day to honor their place in and contributions to their shared story of their country and continent. And I, for one, never want us to forget that in our homeland of Harar. It is our privilege and our natural right. Until we meet again in part two of the series discussing sections on minority rights and self-determination, as well as a way backward or forward in the current emotionally charged politics in Ethiopia. Peace from UNESCO's laureate city of Harar. We also deeply want to congratulate the Prime Minister of Ethiopia for his outstanding worldly achievement. 
and receiving the Nobel Peace Prize of 2019. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. IHMS 